This is Active Christianity's Living the Gospel podcast. Join us as we explore different aspects of the gospel according to the Bible and how we can put this into practice in daily life. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy. And I'm Julia. And we are your hosts for Living the Gospel on this Wednesday morning. Lucky you! <laughs> <laughs> Lucky us. Yes, that's what so I meant we to get say. To, so we get to do this. Today we're actually going to go back to a topic that we've mentioned before. In passing, sort of, yeah. In passing, we brought it up and then we thought, you know what, this is something we actually want to talk about for a whole podcast. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to talk about the Apostle Peter, who, as you may already know, we're kind of, he's kind of our fave. <laughs> he's my fave anyway. Um, Peter is interesting because... And I don't want to say this in a way that comes off like we're trying to drag Peter's name through the mud, but he's somebody who, through several stories in the Gospels, you could, in the early days of his discipleship, you could actually see his flesh several times. Yeah. So, and like, I think it's like we said it last time, he's he's a very relatable Mm -hmm. person. And actually, it's interesting, he's written about more, like his personality and things, stories about him are written about more than any other any of, of the, the other disciples, apostles, like, yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. So you get to see who he was kind yeah. of as a person yeah. in the Gospels. So anyways, the point of that is not just that, you know, we get to see that he often did things imperfectly, but actually for me, he's maybe the most inspirational yeah. apostle to read about because as you start to read in the book of Acts, after Jesus died and the Holy Spirit came down and the disciples all got the Holy Spirit... Um, then Peter's trajectory changed completely yep. and he started to really get victory and a lot of boldness. And then, you know, when you read his letters that he wrote, um, there's so much content there. Yeah. And it's actually interesting too, because I think like when you read about Peter in the gospels and you read these stories, like, you know, he started to walk on water and then after a while he started to doubt or when the, what was it? When the waves, it started to get a bit stormy, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he started to doubt and he started to sink and he, he called to Jesus for help. Or, you know, you think about that story or like when um, Jesus was telling him, them about the things that he had to suffer and then Peter took Jesus aside to tell him that he shouldn't talk like yeah. that. And it's just funny, like Peter took Jesus aside. I don't know, just the way it says that, like, oh, I, I got to tell Jesus this isn't how things should be done. You right. Know? Well, and just getting defensive on his behalf, like, oh, you shouldn't have to suffer yeah, these yeah. things. Not you of all people kind yeah, of attitude, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's interesting with the, you read the stories in the Gospels where you see how he is, and then you read the letters that were written at the end of his life, and you can actually see the direct solutions to these things that are obviously in his nature. Mm-hmm. That you, that you can see in these stories, and then you read the letters, so you can see that he worked with those things yeah. over the years. Yeah. Because the letters were written at the end of his life, more or less, I think. Yeah, I think he was older, yeah. Yeah. Like, he, he worked over the years with these things, and then he had these solutions for them that he could share with other people. Right. For me, the, the reason that this is so inspiring is because it kind of removes this excuse that Satan wants to come at you with, that my nature is... Right. Is too garbage to be saved, right. you know? Um, if we look back at these stories, and again, I'm we're only going through these things to illustrate this point, not because we yeah. want to drag out Peter's flesh. No, but obviously not. Um, so some of these stories just show kind of what was in his flesh that really we can all relate to. Like, for example, there's a story in Luke 5 when he's fishing with his brother and a few friends, and they're having no success. And then Jesus stops by and he says, um, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answers and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. And it, it's kind of like, you know, I, I could be reading a bit into the intonation, but it kind of feels like, you know, who is this guy with this suggestion? I've mm. been doing this all night and he's going to walk mm. up here after two seconds and yeah. tell me what to do and think he has yeah. the right answer. So he kind of, it kind of sounds to me like he was a little bit like, okay, sure, we'll do, we'll do this, kind of almost humoring him. Mm. And then he, he did it and... Immediately, the nets were filled with fish. And then it says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, mm-hmm. O Lord. So, the, you actually see two things in this story. One is like, I would say pride. Like, isn't that just so in our human nature that if we're trying to do something and maybe it's frustrating and someone tries to come and give us a solution right away, we're like, who are you to come yeah, and think yeah. you're going to show me yeah. how to do things, you That's know? True. <laughs> but then the second that you know, he realized he was in the wrong right away as he was asking for forgiveness. So it, it shows yeah. actually an incredible humility that yeah, he had. Poorness and spirit. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, we know that that was a huge key to why 
it began to go so well yeah. for him was that he yeah. had that attitude of mind. Yeah. He, he kind of, if you want to say it that way, he kind of messed up a lot in the beginning. But in pretty much every story, you see that he humbled himself and was immediately repentant in spirit and, yeah. and, and humble about it and asking for forgiveness too. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the ultimate story that we know when Jesus prophesied that Peter would deny him three times. Yeah. Um, and Peter, he was so, he was so zealous, it seems like. And he he swore, like, this story is in all four of the Gospels. It's retold. Right. And each time he swears, Lord, I'll never, I would never do that. I would never, and he, he actually says, even if I die, I'll never deny you. <laughs> and mm. then half a day later, three times he swears, I do not know this man. And he was, yes, he was afraid for his own life because they were out to get the disciples because they knew Jesus, but also just fear of man and, you know, like all these mm -hmm. things that lie in us, like just fear of how this will affect my honor, fear of how it will affect me in a human way yeah, um, on an earthly level and just this cowardliness, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so he fell in a huge way there. But then it says that every time he did that, he wept bitterly over it. Yeah. So you can see that he, he really sorrowed over the sin that he saw in himself. Well, for me, I just, I also, I read through these stories about Peter and I recognize myself in almost every single story. Like, exactly. you know, the walking on water and he begins to sink because he doubts and, you know, getting argumentative with Jesus about the throwing mm -hmm. the nets over and like when he fell asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was supposed to be awake praying. and praying with yeah. Jesus. Like, I just recognize myself so yeah. much. Or the the one where, uh, the one we talked about last time where He's like, hey, what about this guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, what is that to you? Yeah, you know, yeah. Aren't, isn't that all of us by nature? Yeah, to just look around and be so consumed yeah. with what other people are doing. And I think that it's very easy for us to be like, when it comes to transformation, like, okay, I recognize myself in these stories about Peter. Like, I obviously mm -hmm. have the same flesh as Peter, right? This flesh that we read about that has nothing good in it, and it's easy. I find anyway, it's easy for myself to think, well, Peter had something special. You know, Peter, he knew Jesus, he lived with Jesus. Um, God gave him a special grace because his ministry was to build the early church. And like, it is true that he had a, he had a gift of grace from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And pa Paul writes about those gifts in Corinthians, like we the gifts of the Spirit, right? Yeah. And I, he was a gifted man yeah. in that way that yeah. God gave him tools to build this the church and to you know be who he was for us but at the same time it wasn't like well yeah we all know that these gifts of grace actually have nothing to do with personal transformation right no they're tools god gives you to build yeah. the so church, it wasn't like, like god gave him a better flesh after he got the holy spirit right the that's flesh not was what the happened same. the flesh was the same yeah. and he still had to take up his cross and deny himself every day. But something changed. So if you start to read um, in the beginning of Acts, which I was doing last week, and it's so interesting to read those stories of the very first apostles building mm -hmm. the church together. In, as we know, in the second chapter of Acts is when they're all, all the early disciples are gathered in the upper room there and the Holy Spirit comes over them. We know that the Holy Spirit couldn't come before in that way because it was encompassed in Jesus. Right. So he had to leave the earth before he could send the Holy Spirit. Right. So well, and this this is what Jesus says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, and that he will dwell with you and will be with you. And so that is what happened on the day of Pentecost there that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit back to them so that they now had help and power to actually go to action and start overcoming their sin. Right. Um but yeah, so you start to see that after this happened that Peter becomes the boldness that he gets after getting the Holy Spirit is unbelievable. Like this is the man who denied Jesus in the courtyard. Yeah. And then it says he preached the name of Jesus so boldly and powerfully in Jerusalem. Yeah. That 3,000 souls were added to the church in yeah. one day. Yeah. And then twice in the first five chapters of Acts, two times he gets thrown in prison for yeah. preaching the gospel. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, they just can't stop him. Yeah. <laughs> and then it says one of these times when he was thrown in prison, then uh, they pull them out afterwards. And I guess they could only keep them for so and so long. And then they bring them before the judges and they commanded them not to speak. And I think this first time it was he and John. And then Peter just answers back right away. 
whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God you hmm. judge. Yeah. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So incredible boldness. And then yeah. after they were imprisoned the second time, they were beaten and commanded not to speak the name of Jesus again. And then it's written, they departed from the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for mm -hmm. his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Mm -hmm. That is such a far cry yeah. from that cowardly man who swore up and down that he didn't know yeah. Jesus to save his own hide kind of thing. Yeah. You know, so just the power that the Holy Spirit brought and the difference it made in his life. Yeah. So we see that it had nothing to do with him having, like you said, a better flesh. He had a wretched flesh. We can see that just like just like the rest of us do. But when he started to go to work with it and got the power of the Holy Spirit, then radical changes started taking place. And like we talked about, too, you see in his letters that he wrote, um, they're not, I, I read, the, we both read them again this week. Mm -hmm. And um, my my kind of takeaway was that they're not fancy and hard to understand, but there's there's like an kind of an urgency in them, and it, it's as if he knows from experience that this is how you have to take it in order for it to go well. Right. So, like he says in First Peter five verse eight, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. And yeah. then he says in 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 uh, First Peter four seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. So I think these are like it's so clear that these are things that became there were things he yeah. worked with and became like he's something not just, in him. He's not just theorizing. No, here. he's writing what he knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was interesting too um, when you think about the story about how he tried to convince Jesus that. He should try and avoid the sufferings right. that he had to go through. Or not that he should try and avoid them, but that... He was too good for he them. He was too good for them. Mm. That he needed to avoid the suffering, basically. And then that same man later wrote, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you also may be glad with ex exceeding joy. So it's just, this is the same man. Yeah. So, and that is through a lifetime of faithfully taking up his cross and following Jesus and denying himself. Mm -hmm. And that obedience when the Holy Spirit showed him something in his flesh. Yeah, so you can see with Peter that that change in his pace coincides, or not coincides, but the timing is exactly when he got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But so the difference there between him and us is that he had to wait for the Holy Spirit until after Jesus left the earth. Right. But we have access to the Holy Spirit as soon as God sees our heart and sees that we have a heart to follow Jesus and a hatred for sin, then he, he sends us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we don't have to wait and we don't have to struggle for years with no help and no power to overcome. Yeah. So it's incredibly hopeful. Yeah. So we can see that even though we have this wretched nature, which Peter also had, um, like him, we can get the Holy Spirit and with that power, because the Holy Spirit is power and help from God. Yeah. Um, it, it, it gives us the power to overcome, and it also, it's written that it, it writes God's laws in our heart. So, it's mm -hmm. it's a reminder of, of, a reminder to do good and help to do the good. Right, right. Um, and I think, like, I just, I was thinking too this week about Peter and how when he met Jesus, he knew immediately that what he wanted was this life that Jesus spoke about. His heart was upright for yeah. the first second. And then I think about, like, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and these other people who the Bible speaks about that persecuted Jesus. Why did Peter hear Jesus' words and immediately want that life that Jesus had to give? And why did other people immediately reject it? And I was thinking about it, and I think it must have been that Peter and the disciples and those who wanted this life, they were extremely poor in spirit, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They saw that something wasn't right in their lives, and they saw that here now is something I can do about this. I can become free from this. And it's just that poorness of spirit, a sense, a need for something to change. How, how, how does that story go when Jesus well, is going to... He's with a group of people, right? Yeah. And he's speaking to them in a parable, but yeah. he's saying something that's, that's hard for their flesh to hear. Right. And a bunch of them leave. And then Jesus turns to the disciples and says, do you also want to leave me? Right. And, and Peter, Peter says right back, where would we go? You, you have, have the words, words of, of eternal life. life. Yeah. So they, they sensed, he sensed that Jesus has something that he needed mm -hmm. to hear. So 
this is the same thing for us. Like if we're poor in our spirit and if we see that things aren't right there, things aren't, there's things in my flesh that, that need to be taken care of. I need to get these things out. My, my bitterness or my temper or my, how easily I get frustrated mm-hmm. and irritated with people. I see those things and I, I, I don't want them anymore. I want to get rid of them. My fear of man, you know, like, like Peter had mm-hmm. such these things that I just want to be free from. And if I want to be free from them, I know exactly where to go to yeah. get the words of life, yeah. like Peter said. And if I want that, then I am going to get the Holy Spirit to help me and strengthen yeah. me. I have the commandments of Jesus to follow and be obedient to. So I know the way to go. I just need to be poor in my spirit. I can't be proud and think that I can do things my own way to f- to find my own way through it, but just that poorness of spirit is what really stuck out to me. Yeah, that poorness of spirit, I think that coupled with the mind to suffer. Those yeah. are the only two things you actually need. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with what our personality is. God doesn't ask if we're able. He asks if we're willing. Right. Because he can do a work in anyone. Right. All that right. matters. It hasn't, like, yeah, who I am has nothing has to do nothing with anything. Has nothing to do with it. Like, I can be literally the most wretched person on this earth. And in fact, we are pretty wretched. Yeah. Like, it's it says that Paul writes in one of the, in his letters that... God has chosen the base things of the world. Yeah. It has nothing to do with what's in my nature. We all have a nature that has nothing good in yeah. it. But God only cares that we're willing and yeah. he can do a work in us. Yeah. yeah. Humility and a mind to suffer. That, those are the only two things. I was kind of looking, like reading through the Gospels about Peter and thinking like, you know, to put it in a nutshell, what was it that made it possible for him to become such a useful instrument right. for God in spite of the nature he had? And I mean, we already talked about most of it, but I think he kind of summed it up himself in 1 Peter 4, verse 1, where he says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. And that's it. Like, just, if you're just willing to suffer, and you have that humility of spirit, like you talked about, God can do a completely transformative work in you. And when we think about Peter, he did all these things that, we can say, I don't know, I feel bad saying it, but you, we can say there were like foolish things that he did in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, But he never gave up. Mm. And he, he didn't say, oh, I'm not good enough, or I, I just can't do this. He never, he didn't get discouraged. He was tenacious and he wanted something and he didn't give up until he got right, it, right? right? And the reason for that, I think, was because of his love for Jesus. Yeah, He wanted, he he knew his master and he wanted to be pleasing to him and he wanted to become like him. And again, that comes back to where would we go? You have the words of life. Yeah. So that's for us too. Like transformation isn't going to happen in a moment. You know, when God shows me something in my flesh, like shows me how stubborn I am and how much that affects other people. And then maybe I see that over and over and over again. I'm so stubborn and I see it. But if every time I see it, I am fighting it and I'm working on overcoming it, then I am going to eventually be transformed from yeah, it. Yeah. And we have to believe that. Like like we said about Peter, like he wasn't transformed in a day. No, it took a When while. he got the Holy Spirit, it gave him boldness and power, but he still had to fight and use his life to be transformed. Right? And the, th- the thing to remember too, to really fight discouragement is that God knows everything from the beginning to the end. Like, I can look at myself and think, oh, I've been so slow. Progress has been so slow. I should have, you know, like Peter, Peter, like we said, was he did a lot of, we could say, foolish things in the beginning because he had so much zeal, but not a lot of wisdom yet. Right. And that's how we all are when we start out on the way. When when you first get converted and you're so zealous for everything that you see that you're just going to give her and you're going to go and get things done. And we do. And that's fantastic. Yeah. But we have a lot of zeal and not a lot of wisdom, which means we all make mistakes in the beginning. Right. But God sees our heart and loves our heart and he already sees the glorious end result of our life so he's not rolling his eyes at us and thinking oh my goodness you are so slow to get going (laughs) he loves you and gives you strength and he doesn't see that heart that's what he sees that heart that's for him yeah he doesn't see us the way we see ourselves no and he has infinite patience Mm -hmm. for us and long suffering Mm -hmm. with us so there's no reason to be discouraged no and the end result is guaranteed yeah right like if we are humble and we love Jesus and we're willing to suffer. I think yes. you could say those are the three things, actually. Yeah. That then transformation will transformation result. Transformation will result. Yeah. God is never stingy with grace. No, it's true. If, yeah, if we want it, he will give us everything we need yeah. to achieve it. Yeah. 
I was just thinking about these verses in 1 John 3, verses 2 to 3. It says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So we're working, we're in this process of sanctification, of being transformed, and then we know that in the end, the end result is that we will be like him. Mm-hmm. As long as that's our goal. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no reason to be discouraged. So no. don't. <laughs> don't. Don't do that. Don't do it. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm always so edified by the story of Peter. So I hope yeah. that that was encouraging for everyone to listen yeah. to as well. And I would suggest if you have free time to read your Bible and not quite sure what to read and find Peter in the Gospels, mm-hmm. read stories about him and then mm-hmm. read, start to read Acts and start to see. Yeah. It was actually kind of funny because I think we both just randomly started reading did, Acts yeah. at the same yeah. time. And it's, it's so, the stories are interesting. Um, it gives you background into the apostles' lives for when you read like yeah. the letters of Paul and Peter, and you it's can see, very cool to read yeah, about the apostles. You can see the context of where the content in those letters comes from, yeah. and it's just so edifying to read about these men of God who just put everything aside and went yeah. just all in to yeah. to transform their own lives and to build the church. And we actually owe everything to them. We do. So that's all we had for today. Um, If you want to read more about Peter or any of the other apostles or heroes of faith, we have lots of good articles on the website, so you could head over there and check those out. We have a topic page called Heroes of Faith, and we also have a topic page called People in the Bible. So it's just commentaries on stories from the Bible and how they relate to our lives. So there's lots of interesting stuff there. All right. So that's it for us for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, guys. Joining us. Bye-bye. See ya.